Welcome to another Quadrant VS video. And today, uh, I do want to talk about how to uh, connect with the VMware uh, ESXi server that you may have set up. Now, I've been trying to figure this out, and uh, I've been trying. I've been teaching myself all of this over the past 24 to 48 hours. I've been trying to dig deep into this, but. Um, first, it was installing the server, make sure the server was configured so I could uh, install virtual machines. And then uh, after I got all the virtual machines installed, I, I was trying to figure out how do I interface with these virtual machines. I don't want to interface using this client. This is the vSphere client. And this is basically uh, the way you can manage those uh, uh, virtual machines. Uh, you know, if you want to. Um, provision new ones or add resources or remove resources or uh, take them online put them online or take them offline and um, all kinds of things you can do here um, but I'm talking about a way where you can interface like the client you know a uh, client sits at his desk he wants to interface with VM he's got some work to do he doesn't need to he doesn't need the, the sphere uh, the VMware sphere login that's for a admin you want the client software and that's what I've been looking for and uh, I'm thinking, you know what, I've got VMware uh, workstation sitting on my desktop. And uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sure that can connect to it. So lo and behold, that's basically how you interface with your uh, um, server. So how to do that? Pretty easy. You just go to File, Connect to Server. And uh, here is where you would connect. Now, as you can see, I've already got the IP address in here. But if you don't have a server name, like a host name, just go ahead and type in the IP address of the server. You can simply find that out by going to your Sphere client, and there it is right there. That would be the IP address of your server. Or you could just go to the um, configuration or properties and find out the IP address if you have a host name. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just type in the IP address or just bring it up because we're too lazy to type it in. And then we're going to log in with the admin credentials. Now, I know there's another way where you can give credentials, uh, make new credentials for other users so they don't use, yeah, I mean, the same credentials that the admin uses to, con to uh, manage the uh, 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 virtual machines. But for now, this is what we're going to use, and uh, I'll figure that other part out later. So as you can see, we can see the machines that are... Uh, on the server, these are remote. As you can see, here's my computer here, and I see I have a uh, uh, operating system here. But we're going to connect to Ubuntu, as you can see. Ubuntu is still not working. If you watched my video before, you know that. Uh, we're just going to wait for this Windows 7 one to come back up. Oh, well, would you look at that? Beautiful. Nice. Let's go to the Windows 8.1. That's working fine. Nice. Go to Windows Vista. We're actually communicating with these over the LAN. It, this is amazing to me. But uh, this is this is what the enterprise is, enterprise uses. If they don't need a hundred desktops at the office, and a lot of their users are on the go, this is something they can use. Well, right now I'm using this over my LAN. Um, but I know um, you can have it configured to work over the internet, uh, of course, doing some port forwarding and configuring something at the um, server end. So, And here's Windows XP here. They do take a while, they take a couple seconds to connect. It almost seems like Windows XP sleep. No, sh not sure why. I, um, yeah, well, yeah, I, I noticed that. I guess it's just the sleep timers on the operating systems, and sometimes they don't wake up within the virtual machine. So I'll go ahead and fix that later. But we are literally connected to the server. And actually, let me go ahead and show you. I'm on Windows Vista right now. If I look at the console, I can basically, get what the, basically look at what the, the user is doing. So I'm going to try to get this in two screens, and I'm going to try to keep this on top. No? No? All right, I gotta try to split screen this here. So give me just some time to try to get this all settled. I've got four screens, so I can't use the snap feature. But basically, this console a lot. Oh, whoa. Okay, that stretched all the way through my other screen there. This console allows me to view what's happening on 
you know the server or the uh, client side of things so uh, this is not the best view but as you can see I can pretty much see what the clients doing so if the clients having a problem let's just say they can't get out on the internet I can literally just kinda log into the server or RDP or whatever but you know log into the server and see what's up you know if they can't get out see if I enable the network interface you know and so forth and so on so as you can see whatever I'm doing here is showing up over here so it's pretty cool this is a uh, really good software and now right now this is I'm, I'm using this at home I don't own a business I don't think I plan on owning one but uh, this is just all practice for me and this is all amazing I am very surprised that I'm I was able to get this far in 48 hours uh, so anyway um, I just want to kind of show you that basically interfacing with the VMware server with a client and I know there's one called Horizons 6 but I'm not a hundred percent sure on how that fully works yet um, I think that's just for mobile users I'm I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure but I know that's another way you can interface with the server um, actually I tried getting that working and uh, took gave me a certificate error like I'll show you now I'll go to connect hostname does that match certificate and I get something like that I think I don't have I, I don't think I have some oh okay you know what uh, I think this is designed to work over no I got the one that will work over okay never mind we're not gonna worry about that now but I know this is another app that can be used um, and by the way this these tools are all free uh, except for VMware workstation VMware workstation is not free <laughs> um, um, so yeah Anyway, yeah, that's how you. That's an, one way you can interface with your app. I haven't played with the VMware Player. I'm actually going to try that right now on screen and see what happens. We'll hit yes. I've never used this before. I probably have to. Okay, so let's just say I go to Player File, New Virtual Machine. Okay, I think this is just a basic, basic, basic version of VMware Workstation. This allows you to do something like what something like uh, or Oracle VirtualBox where it just allows you to make virtual machines and have multiple virtual machines on your desktop so you can do whatever um, so I mean let me see create new virtual machine no open yeah this basically allows you to run virtual machines on your desktop but very bare minimum no advanced features none of that so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. And uh, anytime I learn something new about this, I'll go ahead and put a video up. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying them. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for any of my upcoming videos and tutorials.